The iPad is a perfect sidekick for any student, but with hundreds if not thousands of apps, it's overwhelming to decide which ones to use. So I want to share all the apps that have been essential to my life as a busy student and now as a creator. If you're new here, I'm Maddie. I run Cajun Koi with my big bro, Mike. I'm a recent medical school graduate turned entrepreneur who now helps people learn more effectively and be more productive. So the apps I use are split across three categories. Learning, which is everything for studying, researching, and school. Managing, the productivity apps I use to keep my life organized. And creating, apps I use to create content and make stuff because as a student, I also had a lot of hobbies and side quests. So let's start with learning apps and more specifically, note-taking apps. This first one is called Concepts. I believe it's meant to be a drawing app for designers and architects and stuff, but it is so good for studying. Unlike most other hand note-taking apps on iOS, Concepts has an unlimited canvas. It also has these really unique highlighters and pens, which make it perfect for creating visual notes and mind maps. Our notes should reflect the evolution of our thinking, and an unlimited canvas allows us to see the big picture and how everything is connected together, you know, versus making individual notes for topics where it's so much harder to see progression. I know my friend Justin Sung, who's also an amazing learning skills expert who you should definitely check out. He also loves concepts, so don't just take my word for it. Another note-taking app I use is GoodNotes 5. You might think, why would someone need two note-taking apps? Well, mainly I use GoodNotes 5 because it has real-time collaboration on documents, so when Mike and I work on things together, we can draw at the same time. So if you plan a group study or do any kind of collaborative work, GoodNotes 5 is a great option. And GoodNotes 5 has recently become a free app now with an option to upgrade. You know, back when I bought it a long time ago, it was paid only, but uh, now I have all these slick other features that I don't even use. Next up, everyone's favorite Stone Age flashcard app, Honky. I know I'm going to get a lot of heat about like, you know, where is RemNote and all that stuff. Well, RemNote didn't have an iOS app back when I was in school, but now you have options. There you go. Flashcards can be a really useful tool for learning. I did use them a lot when I was studying for like step one and step two and stuff, but I would be very careful with flashcards. I think so many students over rely on flashcards for memorizing things instead of trying to learn them, or they just flat out use flashcards ineffectively. So if you want to learn our flashcard protocol, definitely check out this video up here. Next up, which is a bit newer in the roster, ChatGPT. If you're not using AI to enhance your learning yet, you need to crawl out from under that rock you're living and get it together. It didn't exist back when I was in school, but man, it's crazy to imagine learning without ChatGPT now. Without getting too technical, about how to use AI to study, ChatGPT bridges the gap between friction and learning. So let's say that you're studying a completely unfamiliar topic like blood pressure. So without AI, you'd have to Google it or watch YouTube or flip through a textbook or sift through tons of databases of information to find an accurate source uh, that's in the right language and that also makes sense to you. That whole process there is what I call friction. And so when we drain our brain power overcoming friction, we have less cognitive bandwidth to actually learn with. ChatGPT dramatically reduces the amount of friction we spend so that we can preserve that brain power for thinking and for learning. But of course, like all tools, AI is only going to be as useful as the prompts that we give it. So if you're interested in a how to use AI to study masterclass, let me know in the comments below. The next two apps are my reading apps, which are Kindle and short form. So before I commit to reading an entire book, which is a lot of damage, I'll usually start off by getting a summary off YouTube or on short form. I've been using short form for a few years now, and I like how condensed their summaries are and how they also interject like these little comparisons and ideas from other sources as well. So it gives you a pretty well-rounded summary of the topic itself with other suggestions for books. And then if that summary piques my interest enough, that's when I'll go buy the book on Kindle for a deeper dive. Now, you'll notice that it didn't really speak to the organization or the file management or any storage stuff like that for any of these learning apps. And that's because I don't use any of them for file management because all the notes, the mind maps, the insights, the highlights from books that I read, they all feed into Notion. <laughs> I love Notion. This is not a sponsored video, but I've been using Notion to run my business and manage my life and my studies for almost five years now. And after a lot of experimentation with different workflows, I've organized my Notion based on the principle of Tiago Forte's Building a Second Brain, which now makes Notion an app that fits both in the learning category and the managing category, category number two. In my note-taking apps, Concepts and GoodNotes, once I create a visual note, I export the image directly into a Notion database. For my reading apps, Short Form and Kindle, I also have an integration setup where I can sync all of the highlights that I pull into Notion, the Readwise. So Notion is my central study management tool. But in addition, I also use Notion as a task manager, as a complete second brain, as a habit tracker, project manager, and like I said, to run my entire YouTube channel and my business. Setting up my Notion workspace to consolidate and store every piece of information has been one of the biggest game changers in terms of my productivity. And this is the exact same management system that we teach hundreds of students in our program, StudyQuest. So if you're interested in how to improve your learning skills and level up your life and productivity, I'll leave links in the description to check out StudyQuest. 
list. Moving on to the next managing apps, I use two calendar apps, Apple Calendar and Cron. Cron is a free calendar app that was recently acquired by Notion in 2022. It's one of those apps that is somehow both aesthetic and productive. But currently, as I'm recording this video right now, it's only optimized for desktop and iOS, not iPad OS. So the app looks great on iPhone and on desktop, but on iPad, it's a little janky right now. So please, if you see this Cron, make a native iPad app. But until Cron looks prettier on iPad OS, I'll be using Apple Calendar. It's solid. It syncs across all of my calendars, just like Cron does. And since Cron is synced with all of my calendars, it doesn't interfere with my workflow when I get back to my iPhone or my MacBook. For email, I use Sparkmail. Sparkmail is another free app. It does have a premium version, but I've been really happy with just the free one. I have been historically bad at keeping a tidy inbox and it just piles up to like the tens of thousands. But I like Sparkmail because I can be messy, but I can still be focused. It's pretty intuitive to use. For one, it consolidates all of my different email accounts into one place. But my favorite feature with Sparkmail is this toggle here where I can hide all of my red emails so I don't lose any emails, but I can also see all the new stuff without having to do a lot of manual cleanup. And then if I hit that toggle again, it'll show me all of my emails, even the ones I've read. I just like how it doesn't try to be fancy. It just does email and it does it really well. Well. And the last managing app I use is Google Drive for cloud storage. As a YouTuber and music producer, I need a lot of storage space for video and for music. And for a long time, Google Drive had an unlimited cloud storage plan. I think they recently changed this plan to five terabytes, which is still a crazy amount, but we've been using G Suite for so long now, we're just gonna stick with it. I don't think this app needs much explaining. If you're in college or uni or grad school, most of your professors and most of your other classmates are gonna be using Google Drive. But I will share one of my favorite hacks on iPad, which is creating a Drive widget where you can quickly upload files or photos, and you also have access to your Drive search bar. I think for any app at any time, if you can use a search bar to find what you're looking for, it's gonna save you a lot more time than trying to dig through folders, especially if you're a little bit messy like me. Plus, you can paste links to Google Drive in Notion, and they'll create these little embeds. And so that way, if other people, like my professors or other students, share Google Drive links with me, I can still use Notion to sync and keep all of my study materials in one place. Literally, all of our video and business assets are on Drive, so if Google decides to can our storage anytime, we'd be pretty screwed. So the final category here are apps I use to create with. These apps are definitely less useful for your studies, but as a student, I can't emphasize how important it is to have personal projects to work alongside school. We're all creative, even if we don't think we are. We just have to find the right hobbies and the right topics that give us energy. So for video editing on iPad, I use LumaFusion. It's not a free app, but for its price point and how much you can do, it's definitely worth it. When I first started YouTube, almost all of my videos were made on LumaFusion. I'd start editing videos on iPad to a point when they were pretty good, and then I would hand them off and export them as either a Final Cut or a Premiere file for Mike to finish them off. Nowadays, I don't do much video editing myself anymore, but if you're looking to get into video editing, this is a great starter app that won't break your bank account. For photo editing and graphic design, I use Canva. Canva is the design app for noobs like me. It's super intuitive and easy to use. You just click and drag things and play with toolbars. If you can use Microsoft Word, you can use Canva, and you can make some really professional looking stuff even with their free plan. Canva is what we we use to create all of our graphics and our designs for the brand. We edit thumbnails, create banners, art pieces, social media posts, build presentations, and all of that stuff right in here. When I was a student, I used Canva all the time to create flyers, brochures, PowerPoints, presentations. With Canva templates, I remember my presentations looked so much better than all those tryhard students who use Google Slides or PowerPoint stuff. And finally, for music production, I use Note, which is the iOS app for Ableton. For a mobile app, it's surprisingly good and functional. When I'm not at home or I'm commuting or traveling or something, I can start putting musical ideas together. I mostly just make drum patterns and grooves and loops and stuff, and then I'll sync them to the Ableton cloud so that when I get back to my MacBook, I can pull up those project files on Ableton Live and then continue working on the projects with the rest of my gear. Really great way to extend your workstation to your iPad and on the go. So those are all of the apps I use for every part of my student life, from learning to managing to creating. You know, I know the struggle of trying to find that right cocktail of apps that fits your personal needs. So I hope that showing my workflow at least gives you some inspiration. If you got any other secret apps up your sleeve that I should check out, feel free to let me know in the comments below. And all the links to everything I mentioned in this video, including study quests, will be in the description. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.